What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Dominic Rich and in today's video I'll be predicting the entire Euro 2020. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And please do me a favor, leave your predictions in the comment section down below. Guys, if you're looking for a gift for the football lover in your family, look no more, head on over to cardsplug.com slash DominicRichFC to get yourself one of these lovely football cards you see right there. Use the coupon code DominicRichFC to get you a whopping 40% off for a limited time only. Trust me, you won't regret it. There's a hundred plus designs to choose from, but there's a brand new Euro 2020 design currently on the site and to make your job easier, I suggest you pick that one. So guys, this tournament was supposed to be held in the year 2020, but we all know what a shit show 2020 was. So because we couldn't have the tournament in 2020, it was pushed back to 2021 but still holds the name Euro 2020. 24 nations qualified to what would be the first ever multi-city European Championship. And at this tournament, the group winners, the runners-up, and the four best third place teams would move on to the second round, which is the round of 16. So before I let you know who'll move on to the round of 16 and beyond, let's preview each and every group. So let's start with group A. In group A, there's Italy, Switzerland, Turkey, and Wales. And for the host cities, we have Rome, Italy, and Baku, Azerbaijan. 1968 European champions Italy are currently managed by Roberto Mancini and having rebuilt the team after missing out on the 2018 World Cup, Italy are ready to challenge for this title. Players to watch includes but not limited to the veteran defenders Bonucci and Chiellini, midfielders Nico Barella, Marco Verratti and Federico Chiesa and not to forget their sharpshooter up top Chiro Immobile. Italy got to the quarterfinals of the 2016 event and will be hoping to improve on that performance. So let's move on to Switzerland. Coach Vladimir Petkovic represent continuity for the Swiss. In a very tricky group, main stage Shakiri, Seferovic, Granit Xhaka, goalkeeper Jan Sommer, Ricardo Rodriguez and Denis Zakaria would be key if Switzerland ought to advance to the next round. In the last tournament, they only got to the round of 16. And now for Turkey. Resurgent Turkey are back at the Euros under their most successful manager Senol Gunes who helped the team to third place at the 2000. 2002 World Cup. Hakan Chalinoglu who helped AC Milan get back to the Champions League, Yilmaz Chilak and Yajiki who helped Yil dethrone PSG to the league on title, Kavechi and Chagla Soyanchu of Leicester City are definitely players we should keep our eyes on at this tournament. Turkey will be hoping to improve on what they did at US 16 when they failed to make it out the group. And last but not least, Wales. US 16 debutants Wales impressed on a fairy tale run to the semi-finals and the back under manager Robert Page. With a solid squad spearheaded by Garrett Bale, his attacking prowess will be supplemented by the likes of Aaron Ramsey, Harry Wilson, Davy Brooks, and Daniel James. Wales who top their US 16 group will be hoping that Lightning does strike twice this time around. So now it's time to predict Group A. So coming in fourth in Group A, right off the bat, I must say Wales. Their problems leading up to the tournament with the absence of Ryan Giggs. He's going through some issues. You could just Google it. You'll find out what. Don't want to talk about that right about now. But they have issues coming into the tournament. And they're heavily reliant on Garrett Bale. The likes of Aaron Ramsey who's not always fully fit. And a few youngsters in the team like Davy Brooks and Harry Wilson like I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go for Wales to come in fourth. Simply because they're coming up against the likes of Italy who's doing really well on the Roberto Mancini, a resurgent Turkey and a very very gritty and difficult Switzerland team. So Wales again are the underdogs in this group. If they are to be successful they have to replicate what they did at the 2016 event but I'm gonna go for them to come in dead last. Coming in third I'm gonna say Switzerland. I like what Turkey are doing, I like what Italy are doing and I see Switzerland as a team with their shortcomings being great than what they actually have going for them so I'm gonna go for third second in this group I'll say Turkey I like what Sinal Gunias is doing with this team. They brought him back to do a job and he's doing exactly so. He helped Turkey place third at the 2002 World Cup with a very, very talented team. And on the back of the failure of the 2016 Euros, I think Turkey, who have been in very good form in the build-up to this event, will do very well. And they will get out the group. 
top of the group, I'm going to see Italy. I like what Mancini has done. He has made this team a lot better after their 2018 World Cup failure. He's added a new identity to the team, moving away from a very defensive, negative type football to a more attack-minded brand, which is very, very entertaining to look at. So I'm going to go for Italy to top the group. They have to bounce back, and I see them starting off that journey by topping Group A. What's your prediction? Let me know in the comment section down below. So let me repeat, Italy, Turkey, Switzerland, and Wales. So let's move on to Group B. In Group B, there's Belgium, Denmark, Finland, and Russia. For the host cities, there's Copenhagen, Denmark, and St. Petersburg, Russia. So let's kick it off with Belgium. Coach Roberto Martinez takes the world's number one ranked team to the Euros with one of the best squads you can imagine. The Hazard brothers, Romelu Lukaku, Kevin De Bruyne, goalkeeper Thibaut Courtois, and veteran defenders Thomas Vermeulen, Toby Alderweireld, and Jan Vertonghen. There's also hordes of other players in the squad who would supplement this team with an aim to win their first major piece of silverware. The world expects so much of Belgium and their so-called golden generation so let's see how good this team really are. Let's move on to Denmark. 1992 European champions Denmark missed the last event in 2016. And after missing out last time around, the world's biggest sleeper team, as I like to call them, are back under fresh management in the form of Kasper Hulmund. Boasting quite a talented squad with the likes of Christian Eriksen, goalkeeper Kasper Schmeichel, Pierre-Emil Heiberg, captain Simon Kjaer, and Andreas Christensen fresh off a Champions League win with Chelsea, the Danes will look to unleash and maybe venture deep into this tournament. Don't take your eyes off Denmark. Remember I told you so. And now we move on to Finland. Tournament debutants Finland will be under the tutelage of Marku Kanerva. Being drawn in a very tough group, this could either be a baptism of fire or a fairy tale run deep into this tournament. Finland would look to draw inspiration from their sharpshooter Timo Pukki, who recently helped Norwich regain Premier League status. There's also young forward Marcus Force of Brentford, who also helped them get their first promotion ever in the Premier League era. And I think it's their first promotion in decades. And there's also the Bayer Leverkusen number one goalkeeper, Lukas Hrdetsky. Talk about underdogs, talk about Finland. So let's move on to the last team in this group, Russia. The 1960 champions and the 2018 World Cup host Russia are back under their 57-year-old manager Stanislav Chechesov. Russia will be looking to continue their great form at this tournament, boosted by the likes of Artem Zuba, Karavayev, and veteran Yuri Zhirkov. There's also foreign base Alexander Golovin, Denis Sheryshev, and Alexei Miranchuk. Russia would also be looking to use home advantage like they did at the 2018 World Cup to get out of this group and venture deep into this tournament so now here's my group b predictions so right off the bat i'm gonna go for debutants finland to come in fourth i think they have a very good unit and they're very spirited but when you look at their opponents in this group being russia belgium and denmark all in good form over the last three years it would be difficult for finland to get out i think they are happy that they made it to the tournament first ever major football tournament and it would take a, a lot of work to get out this group so i'm gonna go for fourth if finland gets third or second it means that we would have a very very good euro 2020 coming in third um i was it was a toss-up between russia and denmark i know russia they do have home advantage and so does denmark but i'm gonna go for russia to come in third here based on the quality of denmark i think they would actually place higher than Russia. I know Artem Zuba has been in very, very good form. The locally based players have been playing well for the national team. The team is mainly made up of the locally based players, but I, I think they would come up just short and come in third and maybe go through as one of the best third place teams. So just hold up. I'm not counting out Russia just yet, but I must say they come in third. I like what I see from Russia, but in terms of quality, I think Belgium and Denmark would pip them to the top two spots, the automatic spots for the round of 16. Coming in second, I'm going to say Denmark, the biggest sleeper team in the world, very, very talented squad. They have been on a remarkable run from since 2016 to now, just a handful of losses. The team has been very very good they're very underrated you would see Denmark and you would not think much of Denmark but they would creep up on you and actually get the job done 
So I won't be surprised if they actually go on to top this group though. But I'm going to go for second behind Roberto Martinez's Belgium. Belgium are definitely one of the most stacked up teams in world football. When you look at Kevin De Bruyne, who would actually miss the first match of the tournament because of injury he sustained during the Champions League final. That Man City loss, of course, we notice his confidence will definitely be hurt as well. But there's Eden Hazard, who have not really been in good form. There's his brother Togan Hazard. The back line is a bit older, but I think there will be a mix of maybe a Denier or Boyata. In between, you're not going to have a three-pronged defense with Vermeulen, Vertonghen and Alderweireld. You get really run past by some of these strikers. So I could see a healthy mix of youth and experience with this Belgian team. And for them to maybe not easily top the group, but to go on to eventually top the group. So that's my prediction for Group B. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. So now let's talk a bit about Group C. In Group C, there's Austria, Netherlands, North Macedonia, and Ukraine. With the host cities being Bucharest, Romania, and Amsterdam, Netherlands. So let's start with Austria. Austria currently coached by Franco Foda and remains a team that are well known for not living up to expectations. The talented players such as David Alaba, Konrad Leimer, Marcel Zabitzer, and new striking sensation Sasha Kalajdzic, Austria can definitely be a force to be reckoned with this summer. At Euro 16, they place dead last in their group. So they have their work cut out for them if they are to do better this time around. So let's talk about the boys in orange, the Netherlands. The 1988 European champions are back after missing the last two major international tournaments. With a squad inherited from Ronald Koeman, new coach Frank De Boer has a big task on his hands. The squad would be without ace defender Virgil van Dijk, who is still out with injury, but still boasts a tremendous amount of talent. Names like De Ligt, De Young, both of them, De Pai and Van Der Beek comes to mind. To be honest, it's just nice to see the Dutch back amongst the best teams in Europe competing for silverware. So let's move on to one of the debutants, North Macedonia. Benefiting from the UEFA Nations League playoff path, North Macedonia under Igor Angelovsky qualified for their first major tournament. Players like Elmas Aliowski, the veteran Goran Pandev, Ariana Demi and Bardi makes up the backbone of this team. And I must say that North Macedonia will definitely have their work cut out for them in this group. All the best. You're gonna need it. And last but not least, Ukraine. Ukraine has been somewhat resurgent under their former legendary player Andriy Shevchenko at the helm. After missing the 2018 World Cup, Ukraine has been going through a rebuilding phase and they have definitely looked good in the build-up to this tournament, proving that they can compete amongst the best in the world. And with the emergence of talent such as Malinovsky, Sigankov, Zinchenko and Mikolenko, Ukraine can be serious contenders at this tournament. So here's my prediction for Group C. Group C predictions. I'm going to start it off by putting debutants North Macedonia at uh, the bottom. I know they recently beat Germany and all, but you can't really look too much into that when you come into a tournament that was in qualifiers. This is a tournament where previous things could go out the window, jump out of the window from the 10th floor. And I think Macedonia would do well to even pick up any result in this group. Maybe a draw or two the most, but I don't see them placing no higher than fourth. There is talent in the team, so if they place third, I, I won't be overly surprised, but not higher than fourth or third. So I'm going to go for them to come in fourth. Third place in this group, I'm going to go for Austria. I think Austria are a team that always disappoint me. They look good on paper, but as we know, football is played on paper, and they would just come up short. Third. Second in the group, I'm going to go for a surprise pick here, guys, and I'm going to throw the Netherlands in second. No Van Dijk, Ronald Koeman, who helped rebuild this team, went to Barcelona, and you have a less astute manager in Frank De Boer taking the helm. Things could go wrong, but it won't go so wrong. I think the players would back their manager and they would put on 
a, 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 a respectable enough showing to just come in second in the group. I won't be surprised if they top the group. I won't even be surprised if they miss out altogether. Seriously, that's the, the, the situation that the Dutch find themselves in. I think they went a bit backwards after Ronald Koeman left in terms of the grand scheme of things. Missing out on the last two major tournaments being Euro 16 and the 2018 World Cup and then when you look good coming into this one, your manager leaves, you see? So I'm gonna go for them to come in second and to top the group, surprise, surprise, I'm gonna say Ukraine. I like what Andrei Shevchenko have done with this team. They are underdogs and they could write a very, very good underdog Cinderella story, a fairy tale run deep into the tournament here. You might think back about, you know, the 2006 World Cup when Shevchenko helped inspire Ukraine deep into that tournament. So I'm gonna say Ukraine tops the group. Shigankov, guys like Malinovsky, Zinchenko, veterans in the team as well you think about piatov who knows if he'll be in goal or not or if they'll go with the younger goalkeeper chubin i think his name is there's also yamalenko the team has a lot of quality the team has quality stefanenko comes to mind as well marlos comes to mind so i could see them definitely top in this group but it's a left field kind of pick for me so if they don't top the group i won't be i won't be overly surprised but my gut feeling tells me that ukraine is gonna do well they have been rubbing shoulders with some big boys lately and have been performing admirably so top the group ukraine so let's move on to group d so in group d there's croatia the czech republic england and scotland with the host cities being London, England and Glasgow, Scotland. So let's kick it off with Croatia. Still under coach Zatka Dalic, the 2018 World Cup finalists are back at the Euros to follow up on a steady period of rebuilding. Along with the experience of Luka Modric, Ivan Perisic, Domagaj Vida and Dejan Lovren, the squad also boasts some exciting prospects such as Josip Brekalo and Nikola Vlasic. With that being said, I think Croatia looks well equipped to put up a challenge at this tournament. Let's talk about the Czech Republic. With a very underrated team, coach Jaroslav Silhavi we look to put up a better showing than they did at Euro 2016. Along with skipper Vladimir de Ritter, the Czechs boast the likes of Shusek, Kufal and Patrick Schick who are all in good form this season. There's also Janko and sharpshooter Komenchik who could make the Czechs a very tricky opponent to face within the group. And now time for the three Lions, England. Aiming to improve on their Euro 2016 horror show, coach Garrett Southgate and a star-studded squad are ready to take the tournament by storm. A solid 2018 World Cup showing and steady improvements across the last three years means that expectations are out the roof for England. Harry Kane, Phil Foden, Raheem Sterling, new boy Bukayo Saka, Jaden Sancho and Marcus Rashford are all names that England would rely on to take them deep or even win the whole tournament. Or to make a long story short, to help England deliver the goods. And last but not least in the group, Scotland. The last time Scotland made it to the Euros, Scott McTominay wasn't even born yet. Scotland benefited from the Nations League playoff path by defeating Serbia on pens. Group the underdogs, Scotland are currently managed by Steve Clark, with Andy Robertson, Kieran Tierney, Che Adams, Scott McTominay, and John McGinn providing a solid framework for the team. These are my predictions for Group D. So coming in fourth, I'm gonna say Scotland, even though they would be one of the host nations here in their group, I don't think they will do well against the likes of England, Croatia and a very tricky Czech Republic. I could be wrong because Scotland have been picking up some good results lately. They have the likes of Robertson and Tierney playing in the same team, Tierney playing more as a center back, Robertson as a left back and there's quality in the team like Che Adams, Stuart Armstrong, there's John McGinn and there's a few Few other little good players around the team so i won't be surprised if they place higher than fourth but i'm gonna go for them to come in fourth third place the czechs a very 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 tricky unit here shusek kufal crawl all these players comes to mind they are a hard team to play they're a very difficult team to predict but based on croatia's caliber in tournaments not in qualifiers or away 
in you know a nations league game or whatnot this is a tournament and i think croatia does a lot better at tournaments than they do in like friendlies and other things so i must say the czech republic come in third here croatia i'm gonna put them second because there's always some kind of doubt with croatia i won't say they're gonna top the group they can go on to top the group but i'm gonna say second led by luka madrid still the team boosted by the likes of vlasic and brikalo they're still ribic kramaric Perisic, Kovacic. The team is still very, very good. A lot of people seem to forget how good this team still is. I know they've went through a rebuilding phase, but I think second is, is a good place to put Croatia. So, top in the group, I'll say England. Southgate, nothing less than first is expected from you. I know England are in a tricky group with whoever they're going to draw in the round of 16. So, I think they're going to top the group. I don't think they're going to have that in mind, who they're going to play in the second round or whatnot. If you are to win the tournament, you got to be prepared to play any body so i'm gonna say england with a star-studded lineups with the likes of harry kane playing well phil Foden in red form bukayo saka marcus rashford Jaden sancho and jude bellingham playing damn good football england tops the group so let's move on to group e in group e there's poland slovakia spain and sweden the host cities are st petersburg russia and seville spain so let's kick it off with poland with only their fourth appearance at the euros poland will be looking to replicate or better they're showing last time around. Currently under a new coach, Paulo Sousa, they will look to the world's best striker, Robert Lewandowski, Pieter Zielinski, Kamil Glick, and Jad Bednarek, just to name a few, to make sure the team moves in the right direction. And that's deep into the tournament. They were quarterfinalists at Euro 2016, if you're wondering. So let's move on to Slovakia. With only their second Euros appearance since the Velvet divorce of the Czechs and Slovaks, Slovakia are currently under the management of Stefan Tarkovic with mainstays Robert Mack, Vladimir Weiss, Marek Hamšík, goalkeeper Martin Dubravka and Milan Skriniar providing the backbone for a very talented team. At Euro 2016, they did make it out their group but got knocked out in the second round. So they are definitely not a team to take lightly. So let's talk a bit about Spain. Three-time European champs and tournament mainstay Spain are back with a new look squad under Luis Henrique. Currently going through a rebuilding phase with lots of fresh and experimental players, Spain will remarkably enter the tournament without a single Real Madrid player. Dani Almo, Ferran Torres, Mikel Oyazabal, Fabian Ruiz and Gerard Moreno would be the informed players Spain would rely on with an aim not to embarrass themselves at the tournament. And last but not least in the group, Sweden. After three successive Euro tournament failures, Sweden are back on the strength of a very impressive last five seasons. During this period, the man responsible responsible for putting together this team is no other than Jan Andersen. From pipping Italy to a spot at the 2018 World Cup and reaching the quarterfinal of that tournament, Sweden has been the epitome of resilience and pragmatism. Sweden are not short of experience with an average squad age of 29. Marcus Berg, Albin Ekdal, goalkeeper Robin Olsen, veteran Andreas Grandquist, and Sebastian Lawson will be supplemented by the youthful vigor of Alexander Isak and Dejan Kulusevski. A notable absentee is larger than life itself, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who would miss the tournament through injury. So this is my prediction for Group E. At the bottom of Group E, I'm going to put Slovakia. This group is very difficult to predict. It's sort of a group of life. I would like to call it a group of life. It's very, very difficult. Any one of these teams could top the group. Any one of these teams could play last based on their form in the build-up to this tournament, based on their squads, so on and so forth. I'm going to say Slovakia plays bottom of this group. Still have some very good players around, like I mentioned in the preview, but coming up against the other teams in this group, I think they will come up short. Third place, I'm going to say Poland. Despite having Robert Lewandowski in their team, I think they're overly reliant on the man and if something has to go wrong like he picks up a niggle and misses a game you could see the true Poland you, you, you get what I'm saying they'll fall they fall short so I'm gonna say they come in third they could be one of the best third place teams you have to wait and see who I pick to be one of the best third place teams but I must say they come in third behind both Sweden and Spain second place in this group guys 
I'ma put Spain, this is a surprise pick, but it is kind of a weird squad that Luis Enrique took to the tournament. It might work out or it might just turn out to be a big mistake, not taking any Real Madrid player to the event. So I'ma say Spain coming second. They've struggled in the build up to this tournament despite getting some good results. They had to really, really grind it out to get these results. I think they were very lucky on few occasions. And when you look at the makeup of their 11 at times, it's like, oh man, oh man, it is going to be a tough one for Spain. So I'm going to say they come in second. Top in the group, I'm going to say Sweden. I know a lot of people would not agree with this one, but what Jan Andersen has done with this team, I think they're going to be a surprise package at Euro 2020. They haven't had a good record against Spain recently, but all you need against Spain, just pick up a draw or scrape a win and do the business against Poland and Slovakia and you top the group easily. So I'm going to go for Sweden to come in top of group E. Damn, I might actually regret that prediction, but I'm going to stick to it. And last but not least, group F. Or we could just say the group, the group of, of, death. of death. In the group of death, there's World Cup holders, France, former World Cup winner, Germany, Hungary, and the current European holders, Portugal. Yes, deadly. The whole cities are Budapest, Hungary, and Munich, Germany. So let's kick it off with France. Two-time European champs and current World Cup holders, France, find themselves in the group of death. Still on the former European and World Cup winner Didier Deschamps, who himself embodies a champion spirit, Le Bleu would look to carry their momentum from the World Cup and after to do one better than they did in 2016 and win the whole damn thing. This star-studded squad is spearheaded by goalkeeper Hugo Lloris, Paul Pogba, Champions League winner with Chelsea and Golo Kante, Antoine Griezmann, the recall of Karim Benzema, and of of course, Kylian Mbappe. Let's just say it'll take a mammoth effort to topple this team. So let's talk a bit about Germany. After winning the 2014 World Cup, Germany have seemingly regressed on the coach Joachim Love, who would leave his post at the end of this tournament. Failing to get out of their group at the World Cup and poor results thereafter, Germany has not been the force we know they're capable of being. With a very talented squad that boasts the likes of new Champions League winners in Kai Havertz and Timo Werner, Leroy Sane, Florian Neuhaus, Serge Gnabry and Joshua Kimmich to go with the experience of Tony Cruz, Mats Hummels, the recalled Thomas Muller and veteran goalkeeper Manuel Neuer. It would be a travesty if this German team flops again. Let's talk a bit about Hungary. Making it to back-to-back -back Euros in itself is a great achievement for a team that once called themselves the Mighty Magyars. Are they still the Mighty Magyars? We shall see. Currently under coach Marco Rossi, who's been in charge since 2018, the team boasts some very good players. Adam Jalai, Roland Salai, Adam Nagy, and RB Leipzig's very own number one goalkeeper Peter Golaski and captain Willy Orban. One notable absentee is phenom Dominic Shoboslai who would miss out on injury. All I have to say to Hungary is good luck making it out of this group. But one thing you got going for you is the hunger. And last but not least, the tournament holders Portugal. In the last five years, Portugal has been one of the most successful teams in international football. Winning their first major piece of silverware by defeat in France in 2016, one goal to nil, and going on to win the inaugural Nations League title. Still under veteran manager Fernando Santos, Portugal boasts one of the most stacked up teams you could ever see in your lifetime. There's Cristiano Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandes, Bernardo Silva, Joao Felix, Ruben Diaz, Andre Silva, and Pepe comes to mind, just to name a few. Yeah, the squad is too stacked up to name any more players. I will have to name out the entire team. But let's just say Portugal will be adequately equipped to defend their title. So my predictions for Group F are as follows. The group of death, not very easy to predict, but an easy choice that I could make is putting Hungary at the bottom of this group. Come on, guys. It's... Oh man, I don't need to go deep into this. Hungary coming up against Germany, France, and Portugal. It means you place the last. Barring anything miraculous done by Hungary in this group. It, they, they have what it takes. They do have what it takes. I've seen them play. But I don't think anything crazy is going to happen in terms of Hungary upsetting the likes of France, Germany, and Portugal. Now, for the other three places in the group, this is where it gets really difficult. 
Coming in third, guys, I'm going to say Germany. Based on recent form, recent results, just based on the combination of the 11 that Yoki Love puts out. No wonder he's leaving. I think Yoki Love has lost that special touch. Losing to North Macedonia recently and also mm, they could brush all of that off and come into the tournament and who knows win the whole damn thing they're also capable of doing that but i still see them struggling against the likes of france and portugal third second place in this group i'm gonna go for the holders portugal remember they weren't so impressive at Euro 16. They barely got out their group, still went on to win the whole thing. So this time around, I think they're going to do a lot better in terms of their group stage performance. They're going to play second and they're going to be one of maybe three teams from this group who goes into the round of 16. That's also something we have to keep our eyes on with performance in the group because you have to be one of the be better third place teams and a lot of these other groups have more life than the group of death if you get what i'm saying so to place top of this group is le bleu the current 2018 world cup champions finalists in 2016 they have been on a very very good run across the last five years and they boast one of the best teams if not arguably the best squad in world football so you have N'Golo Kante in your team it's very difficult for other teams to beat you so i'm gonna go for france to top the group in terms of the best for third place teams, I'm going to go with Germany from Group F. I'm also going to go with Poland from Group E. I will also go with Russia from Group B and Switzerland from Group A. And those would be my four third place teams to move on to the round of 16. So let's go into the round of 16 and predict this damn thing. Let's do this. All right, so we have round of 16 action here between Belgium and Poland. Guys, right off the bat, I'm going to say Belgium will get the better of Poland here in this clash without factoring head-to-head -head or anything. I think Belgium coming up against Poland is a no-brainer here. Barring Robert Lewandowski and a few other talented players in the team, I think Belgium would destroy Poland if they are to meet each other. I hope I don't end up eating my words. Let's say they meet each other for real and Poland destroys Belgium. Guys, remember, these are only my predictions, so I know a lot of people would be pissed off by who I'm predicting to go through and all, but come on, guys. Come on. Let's be respectful here. I have nothing personal against any team or anyone, okay? So we have the other round of 16 matchup here between italy and the netherlands oh boy this one is tricky but to be honest i would fancy italy if this were to actually happen so i'm gonna go for italy roberto mancini italy to get the better of frank de boers netherlands who could be you know look a little shaky at times especially without virgil van dyck seriously so i'm gonna go for italy here sorry sorry dutch but you're not gonna make it far into this tournament in my opinion then we have france versus switzerland oh boy this is gonna be a good one but unfortunately switzerland i'm gonna go for france to make it through and go on to the quarters here switzerland to miss out guys come on that's a mismatch croatia versus spain oh my god Mmm, Spain recently destroyed the hell out of Croatia. But then Croatia did end up and pick up a good result as well at home. So this this one could go anyway. This one could go anyway here. Croatia versus Spain. Mm-mm-mm. Why? This one is difficult. A lot of people know I do like Croatia as a footballing nation. Them, them against Spain right now. Danny Olmo coming up against the, you know, a lot of players he know from his time playing in the Croatian league. Ferran Torres has been good with Spain as well. Croatia versus Spain here. Ah, this one is hard. But I'm a, I think I'm going to go for Spain. Sorry, Croatians. You know I love you, but I'm, I'm going to go for Spain to pip Croatia here. So round of 16, the tournament would end for Croatia if they are to meet Spain. I could be wrong. Croatia could go on to play France for a rematch after 2018 World Cup final. And who knows, get their revenge and whatnot and move on. But I'm going to go for Spain. Sweden versus Russia. Oh, boy. This, would be a, this is a good one. This is a, this is a very, very, very good one. Sweden against Russia here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ah, boy. Mm. 
I'm going to go for Russia. I'm going to say Russia get the better of Sweden here and move on. Artem Zuba is a beast. So, sorry Sweden, the Russians move on. England versus Portugal. We spoke about England getting one of these teams from the group of death. It doesn't matter what you do, England. It would be difficult to avoid this matchup. It would be very, very difficult. So, England, they could meet France, they could meet Germany or Hungary. But um or maybe I'm wrong, but um they could meet one of they could they could meet one of these teams. Them coming up against Portugal. That's my prediction here. This one is difficult. England coming up against Portugal is a difficult, difficult, difficult match to predict. Oh boy, why, why, why? Why it gotta be so hard? <laughs> But I'm gonna go for Portugal to make it out and defeat England. Sorry, English fans watching this right now, but it's gonna be a disastrous tournament. It is. Portugal is gonna be difficult to topple. So, Portugal to move on to face Russia in the last eight. Ukraine versus Germany. This is another tricky, tricky, tricky matchup that I predicted here. And oh boy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think I'm a fancy Germany to move on though. I think Ukraine has the capabilities to beat a Germany here, but just because of the whole narrative of everything, last tournament for Yoki Love, he might just do well. So I'm going for Germany to move on here. Turkey versus Denmark. I think this is where Turkey's tournament would come to an end coming up against this Danish team. It could go any which way, believe me, but I must say Denmark move on. I like this Danish team. It's not that I don't like Turkey, but I like what Denmark has been doing over the last five years and I think they would move on to the quarters to face Germany so we got the quarterfinals matchup here Germany Denmark Russia Portugal France Spain and Belgium Italy let's start with the Belgium Italy prediction here Belgium versus Italy I'm gonna say Belgium prevail move on to the semis Belgium versus Italy I, I think Italy have looked good, but they would just come up short against a Belgium who I think has more quality. I think Italy might have the better manager, but let's say I have better weapons. We're playing a game. I have better weapons and you have inferior weapons. Who you think going to win? See what I'm saying? You might be better than me, but I have the better weapons. So I'm going to go for Belgium to actually prevail here. The next one, France versus Spain. This one is a huge clash, but right now the French team does look a lot better than the Spanish team. And I think this would be the end of the tournament for Spain if they are to meet France. So I'm going to go for France to move on to play Belgium in what would be another matchup between these two neighbors like we had at the 2018 World Cup. In the other quarterfinals, we have Russia versus Portugal. I'm going to go for Portugal to move on ahead of Russia. I think it would be a great achievement for Russia if they are to get to another quarterfinal like they did at the 2018 World Cup. But Portugal would be a bit too good for the Russians. Never know. But that would be my prediction. Germany versus Denmark here, guys. This is a tricky one. This is really, really hard. This is hard. This is difficult. God damn. Guys, I didn't make these predictions before I did this video. I did the group predictions, but... Oh, man. Ooh. Germany, Denmark here. I think I fancy Germany if this were to happen. I think Denmark capable of, of picking up the victory here. But I think it's going to be Germany versus Portugal in uh, one of the semifinals. So now we have the semis. Belgium versus France. Portugal versus Germany here. Woo! This is difficult. I like the Belgian team, but I think France is just a team they will find it very difficult to get the better off in a major tournament, in a competitive game as well. I'm a fancy France here. Listen, man, it's difficult to beat any team with N'Golo Kante in it. France to make the final of yet another major international tournament again. Euro 16, 2018 World Cup, and Euro 20 played in 2021. So I'm gonna have to give it to France. Portugal, Germany. Mm, Cristiano Ronaldo, Manuel Neuer, face off. I like this Portuguese team a lot. A lot, a lot. I don't want to be boring and predict the same final. But these two teams have been two of the best teams for the last five years. Germany, it would be a great achievement if they are to make it. So, mm, this one is difficult. This one is very, very, very difficult. I'm going to say, mm, 
I'm going to say France, Portugal again. I don't want to do that, but <laughs> France, Portugal again. And my winner for Euro 2020 is going to be France. France wins it. Congratulations to France. They go on to win the entire thing and do one better than they did at the 2016 event win back-to-back -back tournaments like they did in the 1998 world cup and the 2000 euros france to pull it off again under didier de champs him bringing karen benzema back in the team does the job griezmann N'Golo Kante annoying everybody like scam likely calls Paul Pogba doing well Hugo Lloris solid and the other players who make up the squad doing a very good job and not to forget Kylian Mbappe who could be the tournament MVP if he is he's not careful so France to win Euro 2020 and guys it was an epic prediction video i put a lot a lot of effort into doing this i don't regret it one bit <laughs> i could do it all over again but i'm going for france to win the euro 2020 and go into the 2022 world cup with great momentum so guys thank you for watching my video predicted the entire euro 2020 tournament make sure to leave your predictions down below or head on over to the uefa website and use the prediction application don't forget to check out cardsblog.com slash dominic rich fc to get yourself a lovely football card with a euro 2020 design use the coupon code dominic rich fc to get yourself 40 percent off your orders subscribe to the channel if you're new like the video if you like it and until next time peace out rich squad peace